Hi, and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with a summer transfer move to Arsenal. When you're talking about summer, it doesn't get more summer than this. Uh, we're on the island of Meganesi in Greece at the moment. We're going to Scorpiosis later on. I'll tell you what, man, this is an unbelievable country. I'm loving it in Greece. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Why would Socrates want to leave here? <laughs> money, I think. Money, money. But, um... Listen, uh, time to get into it. Just before I do get into uh, the players we've been linked to today, um, some good performances last night by um, Mesut Ozil. Scored a great goal um, for Germany. They got beat by Austria. But it was a great goal by Mesut Ozil. And also Alex Iwobi. Good performance by Alex Iwobi for uh, Nigeria yesterday against England. The thing is about it with um, Iwobi, it looks like when he's playing for Nigeria, he really puts in good performances because... It looks like he doesn't have that pressure that's on him um, when he's playing at Arsenal. And he, he, he's been one of their star men at Nigeria and could be one of the star men at the World Cup. Look out for Iwobi. It could be a surprise package. And be really interesting to see how he gets on um, with Unai Emery, how Unai Emery's going to deal with Iwobi. Will he turn him into that player that we all saw when he first burst on the scene? That's going to be really interesting to see. But anyway, let's get into the transfers. Um, first link I'm going to start off with, and it's all about defensive midfielders right now because we know we're desperate to get one, and that is uh, Stephen Enzonzi. Stephen Enzonzi, of course, who plays for Sevilla. Uh, he's 29 now. He's had a brilliant, brilliant season um, for Sevilla and has burst his way into the French national team, which was a real surprise to, um, real surprise to everybody. Um, because a lot of people thought that maybe it might be Adrian Rabio who would take that spot. But it wasn't Rabio who got the spot. It was Steven Enzonzi, a um, very experienced player. And of course, as I've said before on here, Unai Emery knows him from his time at Sevilla. And um, he'd be really, really a good signing for Arsenal. Now, um, of course, Arsenal tried to sign him before. Um, we tried to get him in January. We didn't get him. And uh, there's a lot of talk that uh, Sven Mislintat really wanted to look at other targets. But the talk is that since Unai Emery's coming, Emery is really pushing for Enzonzi to be that signing at Arsenal. And he could possibly be um, one of Arsenal's first signings. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Steven Enzonzi as uh, one of Arsenal's first defensive midfielder signings. Another defensive midfielder that Arsenal are looking at is Abdoulaye Decore of Watford. Now, Decore, uh, very, very good player. I like him. I, I like Decore. What I saw of him last season when he was playing for Watford, I was really, really impressed. Speaking to Watford fans, they say he's the real deal. Of course, sometimes when you're playing for those type of teams, you don't get um, the proper spotlight that you deserve. But everything I've seen of this guy, I like and I think... He would be perfect for Arsenal. And the talk is that Sven Mislintat really, really likes Decore and sort of prefers him over in Zonzi. I wouldn't mind either of them, to tell the truth. We just need a defensive midfielder. But um, what do you guys think? Would you prefer in Zonzi or Decore? Which do you... I mean, in Zonzi's got so much experience. And as I said now, in that French national team. But Decore could be one of those who could really grow into it in the future because, as I said, Inzonzi is, of course, 29. Another defensive midfielder that we're looking at is um, a guy that we've looked at for quite a while. Uh, quite a few years ago, we were looking at this guy to bring him in. We hesitated, as usual. It was one of our typical transfer window moves where we hesitated and hesitated and then he ended up going to Real Madrid. Um, that's uh, Azia Ilaramendi. Um, he started off at Real Sociedad. He went to Real Madrid. It didn't really work out for him there. He just didn't get enough game time. And um, back now at Real Sociedad, he's had a really good season. And um, there was a lot of people saying that, you know, maybe he could get another big move um, elsewhere in Spain. But um, could he be a player that we could go back in for? I mean, we're being linked with him again today. Um... The rumours are that it would cost around about £25 million to £30 million to get him done. Still fairly young. Well, when I say young, he's of that age of experience. Um, 28 years of age. So not a bad age to bring in a player if um, the fee is quite hefty. And a very, very good player. Um, very solid in, in the midfield area. So 
as here, Iliramendi, another one. Um, and I just really hope this uh, this summer that Arsenal go out and address a situation that, I, quite frankly, under Arsene Wenger, much as we, we love the guy, he never, ever addressed. And that was a situation of defensive midfielder, deep-line player that doesn't really get forward too much. His job is to look after that defensive area. He can, he, he can be good on the ball. He can get things going. But when the danger happens, he is there to protect the back four. We've never had that. And also that guy who can sit behind guys like Mesut Ozil and really make them perform. Please, Arsenal, get this sorted, this transfer window. What about a defender? Now, of course, uh, you know, all the people over here in Greece are getting really excited at the moment because uh, it's looking very likely that Socrates... Um, should I try and pronounce the surname? Papa Papalos? <laughs> they're waving behind me and they say, no, 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 no. What is it then? What is it? Pronounce it. Papa Vophilos. Papa Vophilos. No. Papa Vophilos. Papa Vophilos. Vo. 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 Papa Vophilos. Jesus. <laughs> Papa Vophilos. All right, actually, yeah, that's that's not too bad to pronounce. Papa Vophilos. Um should be heading to um, the Emirates. But we're also again today being li linked with um, Mehdi Banesha. Now, Mehdi Banesha, um, again, a very, very good player. Another one of those players that a few years ago we were linked with heavily. Hesitated, missed around, didn't get him. Um, and he ended up going to Juventus. And uh, still a very good player. Still a very good player. Very combative centre-back Um Arsenal said to be uh, interested in him, in uh, bringing him in. Only thing is, 31 now, 31 years of age. And that's the thing, you know, <laughs> we see him um, linked to all these old timers at the moment. But of course, he'd be available, um, pretty cheap, um, available on a free, as a matter of fact. So, will it be a player that Arsenal go for? Or will it be definitely Socrates that gets done? Again, let's wait and see what happens. This next guy is uh, another centre-back, and um, this time plays for Getafe um, in Spain. Again, another player that's had another really, really good season, and he goes by the name of Dejen Dokanam. Uh, a lot of them just call him Dejen. Uh, he's 26. He's got a €30 million Euro release clause. Now, another player that had a really, really good season. He was previously playing um, over there in Belgium. Um, snapped up by um, Getafe and he's had an excellent season for them and uh, he's a Togolese international, comes from the same country as where we've got Adi Bayor from and he, as I said, had a great season and a lot of teams looking at him at the moment Arsenal said to be interested in him um, I have to admit I don't know a lot about him but what I've read about him um, he, he does look like a very uh, strong and combative centre back of course we all know um, Playing as a centre back in Spain uh, is not the same as playing as a centre back in the Premier League, where it's so so physical, way less physical um, when you're playing in Spain. But reading about him, he seems to be a very physical player. So um, maybe he could be somebody who could fit in. And um, apparently, Arsenal looking at him as a sort of plan B if it doesn't work out with some of the targets that they're looking at. So. Who knows? We'll have to wait again and see what happens, as I keep saying today, with some of these signings. Usman Dembele is the interesting one. Um, you would have seen the video I did on the beach about that one yesterday. After we was talking about it on the show, we was uh, talking about the links linking Usman Dembele from Barcelona with Arsenal. Everybody keeps saying, oh, Robbie, you're going crazy. How would Usman Dembele um, come to Arsenal. The video got liked on Instagram um, by Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. He liked it, so he loved to see, um, you know, Usman Dembele coming in. Could it happen? Uh, what I'm being told is that Arsenal are going to be in talks um, with his representatives next week. So part, apparently, as well, they've already been in some talks, and they might be up for paying the fee and bringing him in full time. So this would be an amazing signing if it happens. If it does happen, for me, it would have to happen before the World Cup as well. Because Dembele, for me, you watch. He's going to be one of the stars of the World Cup. I can see it already. I know at Barcelona, he hasn't had a great season. But I think as a young kid, he's been under a lot of pressure playing against, um, next to Messi and Suarez and these guys. But in the World Cup, 
amongst his mates for France, you're going to see this guy, I think, will be one of the stars of the World Cup. And then if that happens, he'll either be going back to Barcelona or they will command even more money for him. So if Arsenal are going to get this done, and uh, apparently Liverpool interested as well, it has to happen for me before the World Cup. But as unlikely as it seems, uh, gathering a lot of pace on this uh, deal for Usman Dembele. If Arsenal um, don't get Usman Dembele, another uh, winger that we're looking at apparently is a youngster plays for um, Villarreal, goes by the name of uh, Samu Castellejo. Uh, Villarreal, as I said, uh, 23 years of age, he's a winger, a very, very talented winger. As a matter of fact, um, Atletico Madrid, who I always use as a good gauge because I always say to myself, if Atletico Madrid are looking at players with their track records and the way they seem to always get really good players, then I think he must be half decent. But this guy has had um, a very good season for Villarreal to really make him emerge to a lot of people. May not be at Villarreal for next season because there's so many different clubs looking at him. And as I said, Atletico Madrid were looking on him, looking at him in the, in the uh, winter uh, when they lost Carrasco to China as a replacement. They didn't go for him in the end, but apparently they're looking at him again and Arsenal looking at him again. This is another one of a, a Sven Mislintat Raul uh, Sinelli special where they've identified a sort of young up and coming player that could do damage in the Premier League. So um, who knows? But uh, Samu Casalajo, another name that's emerged today. And finally, Jack Wilshire. What is happening with Jack Wilshire? Still hasn't signed uh, the new deal with Arsenal. Uh, we've been told today that Crystal Palace would love to sign um, Jack Wilshire. Uh, very interested in him. And uh, it all seems to have gone quiet on the uh, um, whole Jack Wilshire thing. For me, it's a no-brainer. Um, and I was arguing with my friend here, George, in Greece, and he was saying to me, nah, you know what, let him go. And I saw a few of the comments as well um, on a couple of the videos I've done where there's been some people saying, ah, sell him and get somewhere. But I think that these guys are the heartbeat. Him and Ramsey can be the heartbeat of Arsenal's team. They know what it's about. They love Arsenal Football Club, particularly Jack Wilshire. And those type of players you need to keep, especially when you've got a new manager coming in, you need to keep that kind of heart and soul of the club um, with the club. And I'd like to see us keep Jack Wilshire. And I also look at it and think to myself, it makes no sense um, to not sign him to a new contract. Because, what, he can go on a free now. Come, come July, the, the 1st of July, Jack Wilshire can just uh, pack up this stuff in his locker, walk out the door and say, see you later. We make absolutely no money on him. Not one cent. It makes sense to sign him on a contract, even if we kept him for a year and we had him under a three, four year contract and, and we wanted to move him on then, at least we're going to get some money for him, for a kid that we've had since he was a youngster and he's come right through the ranks and we've developed him. What, are we going to lose somebody like that now for absolutely nothing? It would make no sense whatsoever. So let's um, hope that a contract deal can get done for Jack Wilshire um, this summer. A uh, lot of transfers then flying around today. Um, nothing yet done. I was surprised that um, we didn't see the Socrates thing done yet. Lischsteiner, that's not been done yet. Um, maybe this coming week. Of course, we are closing in on the World Cup now. So I'm sure Arsenal would like to get a couple of those deals done before the World Cup actually begins. Uh, thanks for watching the show. Don't forget to uh, tune in tomorrow. Also, don't forget, uh, starting from uh, next week, early next week, we're going to really be ramping up all of our World Cup coverage. And also look out for a load of videos that we've got coming out today. Uh, Mr. DT has gone with uh, the guys over to Spain today, uh, where they're going to be covering the Arsenal Legends match that's taking place between uh, Arsenal Legend and Real Madrid Legends. That should be big, so make sure you check out all those videos. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow.